Hi everyone, how are you? Sorry there's been a gap in Vlogmas. If you didn't see my um, post on the community page, um, it's been really, really smoky here from all the bushfires that are happening. Not that close to us, but close enough that the smoke came in and blanketed Canberra. Um, as a result of that, my asthma was bad. Um, it's a lot clearer today. The it's still not back to healthy air, but it's way better than it was. My ass was back under control. Uh, my ex was still pretty bad, especially around my mouth and nose, which is horrible. I wish it would just go away. Um, but I, I need to get on, do some sewing, do something creative. I think with everything going on here in Australia and around the world at the minute, I've been feeling pretty low and helpless with all the like political stuff, climate change stuff, and. I won't go into details, but yeah, I've been feeling pretty, pretty low, pretty hopeless and pretty, um, yeah, angry with the world the last few days. Um, angry with the people who seem to be supporting this move to the right that we're seeing everywhere. But I need to distract myself and not think about that. So I'm going to get back to working on my candy cane dress, which, or start working on my candy cane dress. I haven't started yet. I did manage to get all of the um, scrunchies for Lil to give to her friends for Christmas finished. So they're all done. So I think she's going to wrap them up tonight. She's written all her cards, bless her. She's so sweet. And a couple of them are for her as well. So she's really happy with them. I'm really happy with how they come out. They're pretty time consuming. I don't know. I showed you my method in Vlogmas part one of how to make these. And these are all made from studio scraps and things I had here. So. It's a nice sustainable gift for her to give her friends. I'm going to get out my patterns and twirl fabrics and it's time to get started on this. So I know creating something like this at a time when there's far bigger things in the world seems a bit shallow and pointless but I think we need art, we need distractions, we need pretty things to occupy us sometimes and take our minds off all the, the horrible things that are happening everywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna actually make this dress to fit on this mannequin. This is from Corset Laced Mannequins. Um, they make mannequins that have extra small waists, so these curves are great for putting corseted gowns on. Um, she doesn't have much bum, so I'll have to take that into account when I'm fitting it at the back. Maybe I'll put some padding on. Um, Normally I'd make it to fit me, but I'm just not feeling very confident at the minute. Um, yeah, between the, the, the health issues and eczema, I'm feeling a bit a bit down about myself at the minute. So this one will just be on a mannequin rather than on me. So I'm going to use my size 10 corset pattern for this because I know it fits on this mannequin. Um, I've had a few people ask me whether I sell my corset patterns and my dress patterns. I don't at the minute, mainly because I just can't afford to get them digitised. I had these made for me by a pattern maker a few years ago, but I can't afford to get them digitised to a point where I can sell them at the moment. Um, and and I, honestly, I don't think I'd sell enough to make it worth spending the money to have it done as well. And it's not something that I have the knowledge or the technology to do myself, unfortunately. So for now, I, my patterns aren't for sale. If you're looking for some good corset patterns, check out Arania Black. I'll put a um, link in the description. She has a whole variety of overbust and underbust corset patterns that are available to download for free. Check out her YouTube channel as well. She's got some fantastic corset construction videos. Um, she's really knowledgeable. So if you're looking for a free corset pattern to use as a basis for something like this, go and check her stuff out. She's really, really talented. Yeah, so hopefully one day I'll have the funds or the knowledge to get my patterns digitised enough to sell them. But for now, I just, yeah, it's just not going to happen, unfortunately. So once you've found something that's a starting point, you can still follow my method to create your dress pattern from a corset. Um, just make sure you've done a mock-up or a toile of the actual corset itself first so you know that it fits you before you go ahead and make a full dress from it. So I've also got this mermaid fishtail petticoat to go underneath the dress. Um, I can't rem remember where I bought it from, sorry, I've had it for years. It's actually too big so I'm going to have to alter it. It's, um, it's a plus size petticoat, so it's far too big for this mannequin. So I'll, um, I'll take that in at the side seams and then re-put the elastic in. It's got a big hoop in the bottom, it needs a good steam too. Um, I haven't quite decided if I'm going to keep the hoop in 
if I'll take it out I'll decide that once I've made my pattern. Okay so to make my pattern from my corset pattern what I've done is I've drawn the corset part so this is my side front so I've drawn my corset pattern here and then all I've done is mark from the waist and drawn a straight skirt piece 48 inches from the waist downwards. So I've just extended the hip a tiny bit here and I'll do the same on the side back and then I'll fit that exactly once I've got it onto the dress form. And then this is my front, so this is just straight on the fold. And then that comes up to 48 inches, that's the waist. And that's my center front corset piece. So I hope you can see that. I don't have a very good setup for filming huge pattern pieces like this. This is my front and side front. I'm gonna do the same with the back and side back. Just cut them straight because the triangle godet inserts are what's gonna give the flare at the bottom of the mermaid skirt. Okay, so I've got all my first draft of my pattern pieces cut out. So all I've done, as I showed you flat, is extend each one 48 inches from the waist. So that's my front. There's my side front. You can see they're just straight at the bottom. They're not all the same width. I'll even that up after I've fitted them. Then I've got my side back and my centre back, which is pretty wide at the minute, but again, I'll, I'll make sure all these strips are the same width once I've done the fitting. Next, I'm gonna stitch all my pieces together, but I'm gonna stop stitching at, I think 18 inches. Yeah, 18 inches below the waist, because that's where I want the flare to start from. So once I've done that, I can put it back onto the dress form, fit it, and then work out how big my triangle godet inserts need to be. So this is my petticoat with the alterations done and I've steamed the net at the bottom so it looks a lot better. Um, I'm going to leave the hoop as it is for now. I haven't decided if I want to make that smaller or take it out yet. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And I've sewn my twirl together. So I'm going to pop this on and start fitting it. I haven't put any boning in it for this part, but it will be boned down to the hips. I'm not going to make it super tight. I've just taken the waist in a bit, but I'm not going to make it super tight on the hips because my, this mannequin is really skinny. But I'm happy with how the front and side front seams are. I'm going to take it in over the hips here. Again, I'm going to take it in over the bum, but I'm going to leave it loose on my mannequin because there is no bum on my mannequin. I'm just going to curve it in slightly as it comes down to where the godets are going to start there, just to create that slight taper. I curved my back seam out, but I've curved it far too much, so I need to take that in as well. So I've still got some curve around the bum here, but not nearly as much as I'd cut. I overestimated there a little bit. So I'm happy with how that's looking. I'm happy with the fit around the waist and the back. And once it's got the boning in, it'll sit a lot nicer. And it's going to be zip up rather than lace up, even though it's going to have the corset in it. So now I'm hoping I can get these all down to the same width so it looks a lot more even. So I'll measure them as I alter the pattern to end, end up with all these straight parts exactly the same width, um, apart from the front one that will be a little bit wider. So from here, now I can see how these are sitting. I don't want a lot of overlap um, on the skirt. I want it to be pretty much the fullness of the petticoat, um, just so we don't lose the spiral in folds of fabric when we do the red candy cane spiral. So now I can sort of lay these out and work out how wide the triangles at the bottom need to be. I think 13 inches will be about right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly stitch these um, changes. I'm going to stitch the seven godet inserts in and then pop it back on the mannequin and see how it's looking.
So this is my twirl back together with all the changes that I made at the top and I've inserted all the godets at the bottom. Um, I think in the final one I'm actually going to start them an inch higher just because it's the petticoat is just pulling them out of shape here a little bit. So I'm actually going to move them just up an inch so the flare starts from here. And I'm just going to add an extra two inches to the width of each godet as well because it's just a little bit tight around the petticoat at the minute. But apart from that, I'm really happy with it. So that's the front. And that's the back. I've just got to even up where they all start as well. So you can see it's a little bit loose around the bum, but that's because my dress form has no bum. So that's where we're up to at the minute. So the last thing I need to do to add to my pattern now is just add a strap coming up onto this shoulder here, which will be where our big bow sits. Which side did I draw it? Mm. Yeah, I drew it this side. So. Oh, so I'm going to have to add a seam to this front part because I've got it coming out at the top of the princess seam here. So that's my front, I'll cut that and add the seam allowance but it will be a continuation of this piece and this piece here. But at the back it's just going to go straight on to my centre back piece, it's not going to go over this seam so I don't need a seam in the back piece. So that's my back strap which again I'll cut as one piece in with all of this so it's continuous. Cool. And that's going to give me a nice strong shoulder strap to attach the bow to. And on the front I've curved it right into the sweetheart shape because that's where the start of the spirals are going to come out from. Just going to bring that seam so it's a little bit more central. Yeah that looks better so that's where the seam will go. So now I've got my pattern all together and I'm happy with it apart from those minor changes. I can take it all apart. From there, I can then work out my layout and work out exactly how much fabric I'm gonna need. Um, I've got my sequin fabric and I've got the red and the crystals, but I do need to buy the lining, the interlinings and the satin. So I will, I'm gonna take it all apart this evening and work that out and then tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go and buy all the extra fabric that I need. So that's it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing the first part of this dress come together. You can see the shape that it's going to be. I'm really excited to get on and make it now. Um, hopefully I'll have some time to work on it tomorrow afternoon. If not, it'll be Saturday. Um, yeah, I'm excited to get started. I'll see you in the next vlog.